Welcome to Mr. Marr's 3 Minute History. Quick summaries about a range of different history topics. Today we're going to be looking at the biggest city in Scotland and considering a brief history of Glasgow. The city, which literally translates as Dear Green Place, is a significant part of Scotland's economic, social and political history. There have been a presence in Glasgow since prehistoric times, albeit in very different circumstances with often small villages. Many people understandably were attracted to live in the area by the presence of the rivers, notably the, what we would call the River Clyde, but also the River Kelvin as well. And indeed, there are artefacts which trace Roman presence in the city, such as the Antonine Wall and also evidence of forts as well. Many people credit the founding of the city to the 6th century when St Mungo established a religious community in the area, although in reality there have been presences in the area before this as well. The city began to take on a much more significant role in Scottish positioning and Scottish society in the Middle Ages. The building of a stone cathedral, which was ultimately finished in 1136, was the first sign of a clear importance of the area. The city would be host to several important people over the years. For example, Bishop Wisher was one of the key people who was involved in the Scottish Wars of Independence, and he was Bishop of Glasgow. In 1451, the establishment of Glasgow University, which was part of a papal bull issued by the Pope, again highlighted the significant role that the area had not only in Scotland, but in Europe as a whole. Glasgow's growth, though, into the prominent city that it is now can arguably trace back at its earliest stage into the 1500s. At this point, it began to take on a more important economic role with the establishment of various trades and other industries within the city. What really brought about Glasgow's growth, though, was that of transatlantic trade. After the so-called discovery um, of European people going to the new world of the Americas, many European countries saw this as an opportunity to begin building their trade links. Initially, the Scots tried to do so as an independent country, although these schemes ultimately failed. However, after union with England in 1707, this saw huge opportunities come Glasgow's way, including, it has to be said, as part of the Atlantic slave trade. Many people in Glasgow were involved in selling products such as tobacco, and this involved using slaves. This, however, although it obviously created huge problems for the slaves, brought massive wealth to the city. As well as money coming in, it saw the building of fancy new homes and other buildings across the area. In the 1700s and 1800s, this led to a massive increase in the city's population as more people came into work in issues such as the textile trade and later shipbuilding as well. By the time we get to the 1900s, especially after World War II, Glasgow suffered the same fate as many other parts of Britain, which was the decline of industry. Many of the factories and shipyards which had dominated the city came to an end, and this led to, especially in the 1970s and 80s, a huge increase in poverty and unemployment in the city. In more recent times, although these problems continue to exist, the city has reinvented itself in different ways. The various universities all play a prominent role in bringing money into the city, there has been the growth of things such as business districts, and there's also been significant housing changes, as well as major events being held, such as the 2014 Commonwealth Games.